All right, I'm going to be talking about the Psyonix Aurora Sport and how to mount it to your helmet on a budget. So I chose the Psyonix Aurora Sport to use as a binocular because of how much, well, as you know, cheaper it is than an actual intensifier tube. If you were wanting to get a Gen 3 tube, even a baseline one would cost you around fifteen hundred dollars and well that's a good deal for uh, actual night vision tube it's still much more than I want to pay to get into night vision for the uses that I'm going to uh, use it for so I started to see a bunch of this stuff come around and looked good to me so I got one and I've been using it for about the last four months um, and overall, I'm really happy with it. I have friends that have uh, some cheaper Gen 3 tubes, and I'd say the the light intensification is just slightly less than that. But but having color with this, I think, makes up for it. So it helps to uh, give you some more definition. So it doesn't have to be quite as bright. Uh, so I think image quality runs about the same as a cheaper Gen 3 tube or older Gen 3 tube. The only real problem that I see with this is the slight lag. It can definitely be worked around but there is a lag. You don't notice it when you're just kind of really looking around but if you were to have the laser on your gun shining out there, visible laser I tried it with, you move it, you see it move with your uh, non-aided eye, but then you see a tiny little lag, and then you see it move with the eye that's covered by the Aurora. If you're trying to shoot at moving targets, I've been practicing with it. It's definitely something you can get over. Uh, you just have to lead them a little bit more, and it's something you have to learn. It's a little bit more of a learning curve. Um, you have to know, oh, if I'm looking at this through this camera, I just have to lead it. A little bit more than I normally would and you can figure it out and for stationary targets it's no problem you just have to sit on the target for a fraction of a second more before you shoot instead of shooting while you're swinging if you just shoot 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 you'll be fine I'm sure you can still shoot while you're swinging um, if you do a little more practice but I'm just not there yet as far as uh, accessories go I made this bezel protector on SolidWorks um, and I uploaded the files to GrabCAD for y'all, so y'all can get that for free. Um, just search on there, you should be able to find it. Uh, you, so you can 3D print your own. If you don't uh, have a 3D printer, you don't have access to a 3D printer, I think uh, Lion Gear Solutions or something makes one, but to be able to do it on the cheap, you're probably gonna have to be able to make your own. As far as how to mount this thing goes, um, once again, I think, Lion Gear Solutions has a uh, mount options for this, but they are pretty pricey. So I decided to make my own. This Rhino mount got off eBay for a little under 20 bucks. Um, make sure you get the ones that are all metal because it'll slip in there and say, like actually go look at the materials and it'll say like metal and plastic or something like that. This one has this hunk is plastic, but this part's metal, but the part you really care about are these rods right here. You don't want those to be plastic. And that's a part that I've seen lots of, uh, lots of the cheap random mounts come out with these being plastic and they just aren't quite as sturdy. The night vision will flop around a lot more. There's definitely some looseness in here from these rails, but once you get the, once you get the, these bands hooked on, it all goes away. So, get one that says it's all metal. This this portion is all metal, and then if this block back here is plastic, I haven't found that to be an issue. The main thing I can see between uh, the cheaper versions of the Rhino mount and the more expensive ones is how many of these uh, locking lug things they have on there. See, you see this rod is serrated, 
and this one is not. It only locks on a single side, which I found to be a problem uh, once I have the tensioning bands on there, is that as you're like running around, every once in a while it'll poop, click back one position, and over time it'll work its way back closer to your eye and start poking in the eye, which is really uncomfortable. So only thing I had to do to fix that is I should wrap two zip ties around this side of the bar and just basically create a stop so once it gets to this point it stops it's not ever going to adjust any further back um, it's saving the money is just all a purpose to use how much stuff do you want to have to do on your own if you want to get it and have it good to go and never have to touch it again you're going to have to buy the nice stuff but if you don't mind tinkering with it a little bit um, then you can definitely get away with uh, some of the cheaper things. As far as attaching, there were two, the Rhino mount, it's actually pretty simple. You can get a drill and tap set off of eBay or Amazon and some of these little machine screws, which I already had both of those for a different project, but all you have to do is mark your holes, drill holes through your piece of metal. This is a piece of 16th inch D2 tool steel, but you can use lots of different stuff. Drill through, tap them, uh, countersink, and put your machine screws through to attach this. You're going to hold it left and right and see where you want it. Make a mark and drill a hole right here where you can put this quarter 20 bolt through, and that's the same thread that is used for the camera mounts on the bottom of basically all cameras. That way you can mount it on the bottom of here and have it be right where you need it. Another option is you can get just a normal night vision J arm that'll actually click into the bayonet lug and you can mount your camera to it and that'll work but your camera will be at a little bit of an angle kind of like that which uh, I would get annoyed by um, but you can definitely get one of those and they're a little bit more expensive than going this route especially if you already have some of the stuff but you can do that you can get a j-arm uh, I, I didn't really look into the prices I think they're around 30 bucks and I, I don't ever unscrew that um, I just leave it as the entire unit and when I want to put it on my helmet I just do it with this this portion of it so Slide the top end first, pivot the bottom down, press into the little button, and you click it in. Oh, one other thing. To help increase some tension also, I put a couple layers of electrical tape right here, which press down on that flat area right there, and that creates some tension inside there to keep it from wobbling on this end. So the only wobble you have is right here. And that's all taken away by these bands once you get it in there. Right here, to be able to attach these bands, there's not much to hook to. So I just simply ran a zip tie through the hole in the bayonet mount. And I just attached them to that. And that works really well. And you can see... All the wobbles taken out now it's nice and steady so there you go cheap way to mount your aurora